I invite you to come to the Church of My Childhood, an oats field in August in Ireland. There in my church, I often sat alone and listened to the whisper of the wind in the golden ears, and I heard the voice of God. There I invite you, where the sound is better than the oratory of the pulpits or the Vatican balconies. It is the temple of the tender touch of God, where you feel protected by a playful and good-natured God who will, if we trust, feed the needs of the world and our own as well. I want to show you, like, if you look straight out here, of course, the, the lake is Loch Gowna. It's uh, seven miles long, and it's, it was like a, a focus of my childhood and growing up years. That's where we fished and, and went out in a boat and all of that. And then right in front of me, uh, <clears throat> beyond this near um, two-story house, beyond that, the fields that you can see are, are the Doyle fields where I was born. So those fields all around there are our fields, um, and so I know them all. That's where I worked, and that's where I would work with my father and my grandfather and my brother. And each of those fields uh, were like turned over by generations of Doyles before me, and every square inch has been, I would say, maybe sanctified, maybe is the best word, by the sweat and toil of generations of people who, who dug, you know, life out of those fields by hand. So it's very sacred land to me. They were, <clears throat> they were very close to God, and they prayed that the, the, the yield would come in, and they'd go up to the church to the priest and get blessed salt. And my father would would sprinkle a pinch of the blessed salt on every field that was planted, potatoes and oats and rye or whatever it was. But they asked the blessing of God upon the field before it grew. So their religion was sort of very, was very um, integrated into the life they lived. It was not anything attached to it or they didn't suddenly, you know, get cranked up into religion. It was just, and they didn't talk about religion. They just had these little prayers to say. <laughs> they did it. <clears throat> you know, <laughs> they just had it down about right in my book, anyway. I went to the bog a few weeks ago and gathered turf for the fire. In one way or another, the bogland is a repository of stories. Ancient skeletons, human and animal, are sometimes preserved in the soft mass formed over thousands of years. Surely good storytelling always took place before turf fires on the hearth of old country kitchens. After all, in ancient Ireland, it was a greater crime to kill a poet than a king. The king could force his people into obedience, but the poet could enchant souls into song. My question, is the story in the quiet bog, or is it in the dreams of one with warm legs beside the hearth, gazing in the changing turf I cut, and building worlds with the mind before the ashes come, and all the dreams are gone. I th always say I, I survive in Camden because I'm anchored here. Um, because I, I know who I am. In Camden, like, I don't, it, it wouldn't tell me who I am. Like I am there in a foreign place, and I'm happy because I can be of some service, which is, and if something creative can be done, and I do love people, 
get tired of them sometimes, but so I need to come home and talk to the cows. But um, so I'm quite happy. I would say I'm happy there, and but I wouldn't choose to be there um, if I wasn't doing what I'm doing. In the church where I was baptized, I lit candles. The little ones, the same sort my father lit every Sunday after Mass. Six he lit, one for each of his five children and one for my mother and himself. I lit my candles for the children of Camden and prayed for them as my father prayed for me.